Hello everyone, welcome to Audubon South Carolina's Creature Feature. I'm Richard, and this is your typical garden snail. You know, the kind that loves to get into your garden and eat whatever it can. Well, perhaps you're not as familiar with this one, the rosy wolf snail. While the rosy wolf snail is a terrible invasive species in other places, it is a native to South Carolina. It's also a fierce predator, and it preys on other mollusks, such as this garden snail and even other wolf snails. The garden snail has an alarmed response once it notices the presence of the wolf snail and immediately turns to flee. Garden snails know a threat when they see one, unless it's a toddler. Just like its namesake, a wolf snail catches prey by tracking it down, only instead of scent, it does so by taste. The tentacles on its face are covered with chemical receptors called oral lappets that help them locate slime trails. The garden snail attempts to move away, but the wolf snail is on the hunt. It's sort of like having your tongue also be your lips. Only you have to drag your lips across the ground until you find a cheeseburger. The wolf snail is much longer and muscular, and capable of outrunning, outgliding, whatever. The wolf snail is faster. Once again, the garden snail attempts to scare off the predator by waving its shell around, perhaps trying to look larger or more dangerous than it actually is. This doesn't seem to deter the wolf snail in the slightest. For smaller prey, the wolf snail will simply swallow them whole. The shells of garden snails like these are too large for it to swallow, so instead it has a terrifyingly nasty way dealing with shells of other snails. The garden snail reacts just like any other snail once it knows that it's been caught by quickly retreating into its shell. Unfortunately, that won't stop the wolf snail, which plunges its head down into the opening of its prey's shell. As time passes, it will push its head entirely into the shell, extending from its mouth a proboscis that ends in teeth-like radula, arranged sort of like rows of segmented razor blades, which it uses to shred its prey. Trapped, the garden snail is helpless as the wolf snail devours it from inside its own home, leaving nothing but an empty shell behind. If you feel sorry for the garden snail, well, I don't blame you. But this is just another day of life and death out in the wilds. The wolf snail has to eat, just like anything else. He didn't make the rules. The rules made him. Her. Aren't they hermaphrodites? I don't judge. So what about slugs then? Slugs have no armor at all. They are soft-bodied animals with only a layer of mucus to protect them from the elements. That's right, mucus. If you've ever held a slug, you've touched this mucus. The wolf snail senses something tasty nearby, using its lower tentacles to locate the trail left behind by the slug like a corgi under the couch in pursuit of last night's popcorn. The slug goes about its business, completely oblivious. You know, as much as anyone would expect from a slug anyway. The wolf snail finds the scent of the slug slime trail and orients on its prey. Believe it or not, the slug has the advantage in this scenario. It's not burdened by a shell, so what it sacrifices in defense, it makes up for in speed. Well, I mean, speed is relative. When it comes down to it, all that muscle and armor prevents the wolf snail from catching up. This slug easily outpaces the wolf snail, surviving the slime another day. If you don't like snails and slugs devouring your garden, then make sure you let the rosy wolf snail find a home there. It won't eat your plants, and its mere presence will cause other gastropods to run as fast as their feet can carry them. Foot. They only have one. Whatever. Thanks for watching. The wolf snail eats shells by their snail. Wait, no, no. The wolf snail eats snails in their shells. And, oh, whatever.